Good morning once again, everyone. Uh, praise God for another opportunity. Uh, along with that, I also want to say thank you uh, for Kisolo uh, Bi for being willing to uh, help us out this morning to uh, maybe understand a little bit. Uh, thank you as well for your many years of uh, serving Punjang and Noha. Um, and for the rest of uh, uh, the rest of uh, the people who have been serving for many years here at First Loma Alliance Church, uh, I think uh, the uh, uh, so uh, look forward to that. Um, hopefully that we can continue to encourage all of us. Um, and most of all, again, as Kutsalo Nambi just said, uh, to continue uh, to strive to be uh, a church that makes disciples. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, as we've been learning, as we've been studying, uh, it's kind of become a huge thing in our church, y'all. Yeah. Uh, Sunday school, and so it's been uh, something that is on our heart to being Jing Hatavanchu, Yang Kyo Punjing Monsu Khanu. And so again, we want to continue to strive to be a church uh, that makes disciples. And so with that, it is important uh, that we look deeper into the life of a disciple. And so last week we learned uh, this truth. Right, last week, right. we learned that true faithfulness comes when we fix our eyes upon Jesus. We are to follow him. That is where our faith will become strong. Yes, there are many other examples, right? There are many other godly men in this life, godly women in this life that we have seen. But at the end of the day, Jesus Christ is our example. He is our perfect example. He is our model for us to follow in this life. And so today we will answer this question. What are we called to do? When we are, when we are placing our faithfulness in the person of Jesus Christ, what then are we called to do? So again, my hope and my prayer is that this morning we would be uh, faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. And so this morning, as we go through Matthew chapter 5, we are going to add uh, just another foundational truth, another uh, building block onto our life as a disciple. And so again, Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. Uh, I'm going to read the English for us. Uh, the word of God says this this morning. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Your light must shine before people in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. What about you, Chao Tulu, this morning? And as we dive into the scriptures, uh, let us pray together. No, Topeo go. Topeo, yon, you pay, bang, pay, go, pay, dot, dot, loon, jack, the gosh, dot, shall chase your pay. May we remember your truth and your promises this morning, God. 
We speak all the time of this idea that Baekhyun Jing, we are the light of the world. So Father, may we be reminded of that this morning. So we thank you, God. Amen. Um, and so in the past few years of marriage, you know, um, Nasifu and I, we've been married for almost three years now. Um, she's not in here today. She's teaching the kids today, so I can tell stories about her. Uh, in the past few years of marriage, um, if there's one thing I've noticed about my wife, um, it is this. And it's actually something that um, maybe some of us might deal with too, right? Something about Nasifu that you guys need to know is that even at 25 years old, you morning or Jihyung, La Nu Jing Chai Ka Jong Du. Right? Now, Sifu, she's 25 years old, but to this day, she is still afraid of the dark. How do I know this, right? So, Nu Gumong office, Mo Halu, Wu Dong Han Lu Jay. I come into the house and, man, So Lu Hong Ma, the lights are on, right? The thing is. It's the middle of the day, and I still see the curtains are open, the lights are on. You know. There's days where um, our meetings, right? It takes all day, and I don't get back till dark. What's happening? All the lights are on, right? The lights are on. Dining room, the lights are on. Living room, the lights are on. And so it's clear, when I ask her, um, why do you have these lights on? She says things like, oh, it makes me feel safe. You know? It makes me feel like there's some kind of assurance. You know? and there's something about uh, being in the light. You know? I think for a lot of us, uh, we might think the same, that uh, something about being in the light, it gives us a sense of peace, it gives us a sense of hope, it gives us a sense of assurance. So when we uh, look at this metaphor this morning, when we look at Jesus' words and he uses this metaphor of, you are the light of the world. It must mean something very important. I think Jing, uh, right, us as believers, we kind of just throw this term around all the time, right? We talk about how we are the light of the world. Um, we talk about how we must be a light into our community. We talk about how we are a light into the dark place. But what does this actually mean? Right, we hear it all the time, but what does this actually mean? And so this morning, when we read, you are the light of the world, I want us to remember this truth. This means that we are shining a light upon the God who we worship. And so the truth for us this morning is this, that disciples are set apart from this world to bring glory to God. We are to be the light in the darkness. So this morning, as we study, we have to understand what light is. Right? What is light? And I think we understand, right? Uh, we live in an everyday world where uh, you know, everything is about uh, lighting. Yeah. Live stream, uh, the media team, we're worried about the lighting. Right? We uh, drive our car at night high beams so that we can see a little bit further, a little bit clearer in the dark. You know. 
And so light allows us to see. It makes things visible. It shines into the dark places. And when we talk about light, um, it seems to be a common thing when we watch movies or when we read books or when we hear stories. That light is associated with good, right? Y'all think that she took a bouquet. They say it's it's it has something to do with good, right? And y'all call young. That she told John do the she pui and lang she, and that is associated with the bad. Call she young, right? I'm not a huge Star Wars guy, but uh, example for us, right? Like the dark side, right? The evil. The bad. And then light is associated with the good. And so, Tao Ben Yang had the Beyo Lu Teng, or she may Lu Teng, Kuki, Jotoning Buke. Right? If the world needs light, uh, it implies for us that we live in a dark world. Ya Bek Yan Jing, Ya Lu Teng, Jot. Toning buke, in sahata pen ya hulu, ndu la shi ilum la teku, in chong tung di. We see the darkness every day in this life hatred, violence, war, natural disasters, toy under no, in your gate su. That shi chopet yon jing. It is a reality for us. It is a battle between the light and the dark. And as Jesus' disciples, we are called uh, to be the light. And so this morning, as we uh, take a look at these few verses... Uh, my question will be, uh, when the time comes for us to shine, uh, when the time comes for us to be the light in the world, do we shine, do we rise and shine, or will we shy away? Will we turn off our light, will we cover our light? And so this morning we will look at two things. Today we will see uh, what we should do as believers and what we should not do as believers believers. So the first thing that we see in verses 14 and 15 is what we are not to do. And not only is it we should not do this as believers, but it's actually uh, as believers we cannot do this. We cannot avoid it. And so again, verse 14 says, you are the light of the world. What are you not to do? A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Right? If we are the light, if we are set apart, then all eyes are on us. We cannot hide. Right? When people on this main road here, 33rd Street, right? sign had that first Hmong Alliance church. And it looks like a church, right? The thing that they're going to say is, oh, they must be Christians, y'all. Right? One thing about the South here is there's a church on every corner, right? In Colorado, uh, it's not like that. But, right, we drive down the road right here, we see first Hmong Alliance church. Um, not even a minute, right? 30 seconds. church, right? And then around the corner, there's another one, you know. So, so, they, they, they connect it in their brain, right? And so, a lot of people in the world, right? Every Sunday, right? But for some reason, when I go to work or when I go to school, I don't see that many Christians. You know. Is it because there's not that many Christians? Or is it because 
are hiding. They don't want to be judged. They don't want to uh, be looked down upon. They don't want to be persecuted, y'all. So they try to blend in with the crowd. And yet Jesus says, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Right? So, so y'all, y'all go jing jing, you talk all. You are still called to shine your light. Because the reality is, all eyes are on us. I remember in Colorado, the assembly line. People ask me all the time, uh, what are you going to do, right? Do you plan to be here long? And I would say, no, I actually want to be a, a pastor. You know, I, I feel like I'm called to the ministry, y'all. And then for some reason, every single moment after that, my coworkers, they would look and they would really examine my life, y'all. Oh, Sam, but then why did you clock in early? Or why did you clock in, or why did you choose to clock in um, and leave early? Right? Oh, Sam, God, that you eat Jane, does she, uh, you took a long lunch today. You're supposed to keep right on time, right? You're supposed to follow all these rules. And so, Jopet Yon Jane is a little bit like that, y'all. We know that when people know that we are believers, that they are watching us, y'all that all eyes are on us. And so we do not hide. And so what happens when we do hide? Right? Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but put it on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. No one lights a lamp just to cover it up. Right? It is uh, foolish. It is unheard of. It seems as though it makes no sense, right? right? When we talk about it, like when we just think about our everyday lives, right? Would it make sense um, if you go into your house, you turn on a lamp, and then right away you get a blanket and you just cover it? Right? That would be foolish, right? That doesn't make any sense. Would it make sense for us to uh, turn on these lights for one second and then say, oh, we don't need the light anymore? So we shut them off? That wouldn't make sense. Right? So when we find ourselves in, in situations where uh, we are ashamed or, or when we shy away from displaying our faith, And so Jesus says that in his teaching here. That in the same way, uh, oftentimes we do that with our faith as well. Right? Where he is calling us, we hide, right? We shy away. We do not do it. And so what does it look like for us in our everyday life to not proudly display our faith? Right, what does that what might that look like, right? It seems very simple, but we do this in our everyday lives. A couple of examples uh, for me. I remember when I was in high school, growing up at uh, in school, there wasn't a lot of Christians at my school. Right? There weren't a lot of people. A lot of people I, I hung out with, a lot of my friends. Um, we would eat lunch together, but I was always so afraid to pray in front of my friends. Right? But I knew in my heart, I was like, yes, I'm supposed to pray before I eat, right? And so what would I do, right? Um, I would do this trick, maybe you guys have done it too, where I'm sitting at the table and I accidentally drop something, right? And then when I kneel down to pick it up, I say a quick prayer, 
Lord, thank you for this food. And I come back up, and I don't have to pray, right? I already prayed. Because, again, I was afraid of what my friends would think about me. Or I was afraid that my friends would ask me questions that maybe I didn't know the answers to. I remember in high school, Takuching uh, played basketball. Right? I was on the basketball team. And I remember very early on in the season, Onde Beyo play, na? Benyon, the Beyon lockers, Benyon, okay. And I was sitting there, and I was actually sitting there, and I was praying. Right? I, was, I had my eyes closed. I was sitting there. I was praying by my locker before the game. And then my friend, he tapped me on the shoulder. He said, Dude, Sam, what are you doing? And I was embarrassed, and I said, oh, I'm just thinking. Yeah, I'm just sitting here thinking, right? Instead of saying, oh, gu, gu ying ta fan chu chu du chu, right? Instead, I, I shied away, right? I hid in those moments. Right, at work, taupe o hao lu, right? We are engaged in conversation every day, be yang tang, Right? Our co-workers every day. And then sometimes the conversations go good, right? Other times it goes into a direction that is not so good, right? 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 And then your life as a Christian, right? Or even uh, the the good thing would be to say, hey, we shouldn't talk about those things, you know? or we don't know the whole story, right? But in reality, bekyale, oh, that's interesting, right? Yaku ha right? Let me listen too, right? Let me be a part of this conversation where we are are tearing others down. So these are just small. A little examples of what it looks like to hide our light. One of my professors told me in college this truth. He said to me uh, that sin is committed in darkness because we don't want to be caught. It is easier to hide our sin in the dark. Tope sansu geitsu, or tope yo, or ian clanchi gutsu, manchu. Be yale mo kusu, we hide it, we cover it. Because te yan de yoke, chong dun di gu pechi san, or lutu, or lutu, bautsu pe yo. We want to hide our sin. We want to hide our um, brokenness. And even worse yet, as we are talking about, we want to even hide our faith at times. And so again, we are called to no longer hide our light. It makes no sense, right? jing. <laughs> We cannot hide. And so instead, what should we do? If we cannot hide, what should we do? We are to live a life that displays God's character. We see this in, in verse, uh, at the end of verse 15 and verse 16 there. Right? And the light, it gives light to all who are in the house. Your light must shine before people in such a way that they may never, or that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Right? And so we do and show our good works. So 
So what does this mean, right? It means that there is a very high standard for us to live as Christians, as disciples. It is a, a godly standard to reflect uh, his character, to reflect his characteristics. And we are to live in ways that demonstrate truth about our Christian faith. Right? We do not do it for us, but it clearly says that we do it for the glory of God. And again, as believers, right, everything we do is seen, heard, and known. Again, when the cars drive by the Popu, First Long Alliance Church, they see that the parking lot is full. They see that uh, there are people worshiping. Then again, the second we walk out those doors and we say, oh, I don't want a part of this anymore, we hide our light, that's where it becomes the issue. Right? So again, in the examples that I shared earlier, right, what would it look like if we did not hide away instead of letting our light shine? Right? And I openly pray in front of my friends. What is the result of that? They may not understand. They may ask me questions. But the truth is they cannot deny my trust, my faith in the Lord. Right? And it opens doors. It opens opportunities for them to see who God is to me. When we go to work, what does it look like to shine your light in that moment? Maybe speaking truth into that, right? right? So again, all things that we do, we do for the glory of God. And that is what it means when we say we are the light. And as believers, we are called uh, to be holy and righteous in an evil and cruel world. Again, right? So we do not add to that, and yet we, and instead we shine a light into that. So yes, we are the light of the world, right? Again, we hear it all the time. Right? We are the light of the world. But I pray uh, that today, as we hear these words, hear this truth, that it would refocus us, right? right? And when we walk out these doors this morning, and when we walk into work tomorrow, we cannot shy away, we cannot hide. We are the light of the world, and I pray that God will use us in that way. And so, uh, I want to tell you guys a little bit about me. Right? I shared a little bit about my wife earlier, right? Nasifu, she's afraid of the dark. But for me, I'm a little bit stubborn, right? Uh, I'm a little bit stubborn in these ways. Um, she'll turn on every light, I'll turn off every light, try to save energy, right? Try to save electricity. And so even at night, when I have to like get up to use the bathroom, I won't turn the light on. I'll just say, I'll, it's dark, but I'm gonna walk through the room, right? And so I walk across our bed, <clears throat> and the same thing will always happen to me. Right? I'm walking in the dark, and the same thing will always happen. Boom. I stub my toe on the bed. 
because the light wasn't on. Or, boom, I hit my, my hip onto the bed frame because the light wasn't on, right? Green, uh, So again, when we walk in darkness, we end up hurt or we end up in our sin. So let us shine a light. Right? So let us not live in the darkness. Let us be the light. Let us pray. Thank you this morning, It is a, a very common thing that we hear, God. We are the light of the world. And yet many times, Lord, we choose to hide our light. And so, Father, I pray that we uh, do not do those things anymore. But instead, that we would be bold and courageous believers as your disciples. That we would display our faith, that people would know that we are a church that loves you. We are a church that fears you. We are a church that honors you, God. So we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth this morning. May we remember all that you have for us today, God. May we remember these truths. May we be uh, convicted to be a light into our community, to be a light into our own homes at times. So, Father, we trust in you today. Would you be with us as we remember, as we are reminded of your truth? And, Father, as we are uh, shaped and molded, as we are becoming disciples of you, may we yearn to grow, may we yearn for understanding. And so we thank you for this time in your word once again. We praise you. We lift all things up to you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.